السلام عليكم انا دكتوره رضوى احمد شمم مدرس طب الاطفال والغدد الصماء والسكر في الاطفال جامعه القاهره النهارده هنتكلم عن موضوع انا بشوف ان هو موضوع مهم قوي هو بيدياتريك كوشنج سيندروم لان احنا بقينا بنشوفه كتير جدا في عيادات الجنرال بيدياتريكس وبيبقوا بنلاقي الاطفال دول بيبقوا ريفيرد لينا برضو في عيادات البيدياتريك اندوكراينولوجي كتير يعني اكتر من ما كنا بنشوفهم قبل كده هنعرض الموضوع بتاعنا من خلال كيس سيناريو والكيس دي it's a true story Female patient 9 months old presented to us at endocrine clinic complaining of progressive weight gain Perinatal history normal birth weight Nutritional history she was breastfed Weaning started at 6 months with vegetables and cereals uh, no intake of any medications, especially we asked about the steroids intake and the mother denied completely the use of any steroids. By examination, we found that her weight, 13 kilograms on plus 3.6 standard deviation score and her length, 65 centimeter at minus 2.2 standard deviation score. And the baby has cushionoid features, as we can see, moon face, pelethora, acne, buffalo hump, hirsutas. And by examination of the genital area, we found severe napkin dermatitis, as we can see. What is Cushing syndrome in pediatrics? It refers to signs and symptoms caused by excess free plasma glucocorticoids. Excess glucocorticoids may be due to either increased endogenous production or prolonged exposure to exogenous glucocorticoids. While endogenous Cushing syndrome is a rare disease, iatrogenic Cushing syndrome from glucocorticoid products is commonly seen in clinical practice. We classify pediatric Cushing syndrome according to etiology into either ACTH dependent, which is under the control of ACTH, adrenocorticotrophic hormone secreted from the anterior pituitary, which stimulates cortisol production from the adrenal gland, or ACTH independent, in which cortisol is secreted directly from the adrenal glands, not under the control of ACTH. As we can see, ACTH dependent as ACTH secreting pituitary adenoma, Cushing disease, or maybe ectopic ACTH syndrome, ectopic production of ACTH, either from benign or malignant non-endocrine tumors, as, uh, as we can see as bronchiogenic carcinoma, small cell carcinoma of the lung, pheochromocytoma, may be associated with ectopic ACTH secretion and others. ACTH independent as exogenous glucocorticoid intake, known as drug induced or iatrogenic Cushing, adrenocortical tumors, either adenoma or carcinoma, and primary adrenocortical hyperplasia. These are the clinical manifestations of Cushing syndrome, as we all know, and we classify them according to their frequency, from the most common to the least common. Truncal obesity, moon phase, hypertension, skin atrophy and bruising, diabetes or glucose intolerance, gonadal dysfunction, muscle weakness, hirsutism, acne, mood disorders, osteoporosis, fungal infections. We returned back to our case and we asked the mother, uh, we took detailed history and we asked her what type of cream she used for this napkin dermatitis. She told us that she got a cream from the pharmacy. Uh, we asked if it contained steroids or not. She doesn't know. We asked her to show us this type of cream she used. And it is a surprise at, as we found that it is this type of cream. It contains clopetazole propionate 0.05%. And she used it three times per day for two months continuously. And when we searched about this type of cream, we found that clopidazole propionate 0.05% classified as class one, very potent type of steroids. So we are in front of a case of iatrogenic Cushing syndrome from the use of this topical steroid cream in very large doses 
continuously for two months. What is iatrogenic Cushing syndrome? The most common cause of iatrogenic or drug-induced Cushing is glucocorticoid intake by different routes, either injected, oral, epidural, inhaled, nasal, or topical. Risk of topical steroids is very high in infants and children compared to adults due to higher body surface area, status of the skin, when the keratinized layer of the skin is damaged totally or partially, as this patient that she has she had severe napkin dermatitis with damage of the keratinized layer of the skin, which allows much more rapid effective drug penetration and permeation. Also, coverage of the skin after application of this topical cream increases its absorption. Sequelae of this uh, uh, of excess steroid intake. It leads to suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, delayed or slow recovery from adrenal insufficiency. When we start withdrawal of these corticosteroids or tapering, this leads to psychological effects on those infants and children. Also, suppression of growth, leading to short stature and reduced final high potential. Arrest or failure of pubertal onset or progress. Also, bone health is markedly affected with failure of gaining optimal adult bone mass. Adrenal suppression, secondary to exogenous corticosteroids, this is the most common cause of adrenal insufficiency. Children who received supraphysiological doses of corticosteroids more than 8 to 12 mg per meter square per day hydrocortisone or equivalent preparation for a period of more than two weeks, they are at risk to develop adrenal crisis as they have suppression of the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. And also the axis may remain suppressed for months reported up to median of 11 months. Here uh, we have to know when I have to taper glucocorticoids. If it is used for a period less than three weeks, at a dose less than 5 mg per day of prednisone or equivalent, or if it is used as alternate day dosing, no need to taper the glucocorticoids. If it is used for a period more than 3 weeks, moderate to high dose, about 20 or more mg prednisone or equivalent preparation, used as evening dose, the patient has cushionoid signs or symptoms, we have to do slow tapering of glucocorticoids. If it is used in low to moderate dose, 10 to 20 mg prednisone or equivalent preparation for a period more than three weeks. Also, those patients are in at increased risk of adrenal crisis if they are exposed to infections or in case of a scheduled surgery. Here we have to do slow tapering or I may do slow dose ACTH stimulation tests to test the axis before tapering of these glucocorticoids. This is approach to corticosteroid withdrawal. Step one, we have to decrease glucocorticoid dose from supraphysiologic to physiologic dose. Step two, switch to AM hydrocortisone or consider alternate day therapy. Step three, to measure morning cortisol level. If it is less than three microgram per deciliter, so the patient is adrenally insufficient and we have to continue glucocorticoid and retest within four to six weeks. If it is more than 20 microgram per deciliter, this means that the axis has recovered and we can withdraw glucocorticoid therapy. If it is from three to 20 microgram per deciliter, so we need to do further testing as insulin tolerance test or corticotropin releasing hormone stimulation tests. Back to our case. When we examined the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis, we found that cortisol level was very low and also the ACTH level. This means that the axis of our patient was suppressed. So we advise the mother to stop steroid creams and to start oral glucocorticoids hydrocortisone at a dose 8 to 10 mg per meter square per day 
for two weeks with gradual tapering over six to eight weeks and retesting of cortisol and ACTH. And also the parents were instructed to double the dose during stressful situations as infections or in scheduled surgery. Our learning points from this case that Cushing syndrome in a childhood results mostly from exogenous administration of glucocorticoids. Endogenous Cushing syndrome is a rare disease. In a childhood, lack of height gain concomitant with weight gain is the most common presentation of Cushing syndrome. Pediatricians should prescribe topical steroids only when necessary and should give instructions to parents regarding its proper use. Prolonged use of topical steroids can cause iatrogenic Cushing syndrome, and those children are at risk of adrenal insufficiency with abrupt cessation of their steroid intake. And finally, when you see such infants and children at your clinic, this is not just simple obesity. Those infants and children, they have cushionoid features, as you can see. So first, you have, don't forget to take detailed history from the mother regarding the use of any steroid preparation. And you have to ask direct question regarding the use of topical steroid creams. You have to do full examination for the baby. Don't forget to examine the genital area not to miss any information and also you can and you have to refer those infants to pediatric endocrinologists to test for the access and to start steroid replacement therapy with gradual tapering of this glucocorticoid preparation thank you thanks a lot